Yo, what's good guys? It's your boy, uh, I sit through here back from his two week break <laughs> of uh, uploading and stuff. So, basically, uh, in this video today, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to make an advanced bootstrapper for your Roblox exploit, with just like really allows you to remotely control your exploit, like update wise, you know, and actually push updates properly and stuff rather than having to like send a big zip file and stuff. So, we're actually gonna be coding this in uh, C sharp. I was actually supposed to do it for C++, but, you know, I got tired and C++, you guys would have to, like, install a bunch of other directories and add-ons and stuff and libraries. So just to say that we're going to do in C, C Sharp, which we've always been doing. So let's get into it. You guys are going to need a pastebin.com account. So, like, right here, I have one. So you guys are going to need that. And then um, once you have that, yeah, you also need to you know, have Visual Studio and stuff. So. So what I'm going to do is just create a new project in here and we're going to search for console app. For me, it just shows up here, but just search up for C Sharp console app. Double click it, I'm going to name mine uh, Sin Strap because it's a Synapse X strapper. Go ahead, buy Synapse X. Probably the best exploit right now. I'm joking, but yeah. All right, so you guys want to, it's, while it's creating stuff, we're going to go to Firefox here or whatever browser you're using in Pastebin. Go to your my Discord server, and we're just gonna copy the message.txt for this. Probably be in a link for ties, but yeah, I'll label it for you. Just we're gonna copy this one. This is gonna be the JSON text. So just copy that, and we're gonna go to our paste pen and paste it. So ba mainly, I think if you guys uh, know how paste pen works with accounts, you guys can control certain pastes. Here, we're just gonna be controlling it and stuff through that. You know, there's many other ways you guys could do it through like like making your own web server and doing it. But for this purpose, we're gonna use just Pastebin. And for the status, it's gonna be either false, which means false, it's not working, or true, which means it's working. I'm gonna leave it on actually false right now. And for the software URL, we'll get back to that in a second. And the uh, software URL, you guys can basically put the URL to the new update or the code that it's gonna download. The executor basically knows it. And then for software version, you know, this is gonna be the version of it. I can we can do 1.01, 1.02, 1.1, 1.5, 3.2, 3B, but it just has to follow a certain way. For now, I'm just going to do 1.0, and then um, we just have a change log here, which will actually print at the bootstrapper. But for now, we're going to click create, and then here, I'm actually going to right click raw and open it in a different tab. And I'm just going to have it here in a different tab. So now, in Visual Studio, uh, you guys are going to see this. This is just going to be your, like, area to write your code obviously you guys should know that and uh yeah let's, let's get into the coding part first thing you guys can go to the re debug up here and release and then we're just going to remove all this code you guys want to go to the discord server uh, and you guys are going to see here we have like uh, some of the stuff the code basically for it for here we're going to get the message.txt which is right here so this one's actually going to be for the whole code of it so we're just going to copy all this i missed the bracket then but yeah we're going to copy all this Go back, and I'm just gonna paste it here. All right. So, what this code basically does is, oh my God, there's a lot of errors. Hold up. Uh, give me a sec. I think I copied it wrong. All right, there. All right. So, what this guy is gonna do is basically go to your JSON URL here. So, actually, we need to go grab it. This raw link. So, we're just gonna grab it. Go back and paste it. So, what we what this code basically does is uses a Newton soft. And we're actually gonna go install that, but go to a project, manage NuGet packages, browse newtonsoft.json, or you can just write newtonsoft, click this, install. All right, so basically what this does is it references newtonsoft, sends a request to your paste bin, send a request to the Roblox client settings to get the latest version, it fetches version info. It checks here, actually, if the status says it's false, it's going to print it's currently down. If not, it's going to break out of there by using the return. It's going to, this is just a check, but if it if it does actually happen, it doesn't return a, like, return here, then it's just going to skip it. And uh, here, it's just going to create the version.txt file for our bootstrapper. It marks the uh, version of our bootstrapper. And yeah, pretty much that's what, like, all this code does is just bootstrapper stuff. For me, I did name it a uh, chill v3. You guys can change that by just pressing Control F, type in chill v3 like that, and then just click the down arrow and name whatever you wanted it to be. So like here, instead of saying chill v3 is currently down, we're gonna say synapsis, because the name of the executor. We're just gonna click 
back. And then I'm just gonna back out here. And there's an AC, uh, ACR like section here at the bottom. I'm just gonna keep that as a chill for now. I'm too lazy to change it, but if you guys did want to manually change it, you go to like something here like ACR generator like this. You guys would type in let's say like synapsis. And you guys would copy like here, like I'll show you actually. So you guys would copy each line like so, and then just uh, paste it there. So like here, I'll actually do that real quick here. But I'll try to be my quickest with it. It's like that. You guys are gonna like paste each one like that. So we'll do that again here. And yeah, it shouldn't take too long. And then with the uh, extra ones you have left over, obviously you can just uh, go ahead and remove them as they, uh, they'll be useless. So like that, you can remove the buns you don't need. And yeah, we have it printing synapses. All right, and then it does print in dark red. You guys also can change it to like print dot white, tint dot, like here, if I just do that, like it'll show all its colors. I'm actually gonna choose, uh, what should I choose? I'm just gonna choose blue. And then press Control S, and we also had to add the um, normal color back at the end since that's what's gonna do after it. And yeah, we can press Control S, and we're just gonna click the File button up here. Since I actually built it in Desktop, I can just go to Desktop. But if you guys just the easier version is go to here, uh, Copy can, by pressing Control C, click the Windows button, Control V, and paste it. Click it here, and then go to Bin. Since we're working in Release, we're just gonna go to Release folder, Net 8.0. And uh, here we're just going to click the build and build solution. Meanwhile, that's while that's happening, uh, actually I'm going to use a pretty good demonstrator, which is Synapse X here. Let me just uh, actually extract it. But for now, actually, I might just use a, a normal Windows Forms project. But yeah, actually, no, I already have a Synapse folder here. Hold up. Uh, it should be like right here. Where did I put it? Right here. Yeah, I would use this for example, but... Uh, I'm too lazy to go bring up the source code. So yeah, it should say here now, built successfully. Let me put this to the side. She's not gonna let me, hold on. There, I had to close it. But yeah, it's gonna say build one succeeded. Uh, and yeah, that means if we go to our folder now, if we just check. Yeah, we should have it built. And there's one, some things that we can delete here. So we're just gonna delete the PDB, it doesn't matter. And this is all you guys need for the uh, bootstrapper. So it's not actually going to show the .exe, I just have it showing like that. So this is what it'll actually look like for you guys. Like that. And what you guys are just going to do is just, for the bootstrap or run synstrap, or whatever you guys named it, it's going to show it, and it's going to say whatever. If it's down, it's just going to say synapsis is currently down. And uh, yeah. I think I actually did make an error in the code. Hold on. Yeah, so I put it as false. So let's say guys like here, watch. We run it. It says synapsis is currently down, and it closes. In here to change it basically to being up we'd click edit and then write in true we're actually we're not gonna do that yet though since we need to add our software URL and I'll show you guys how to do that so let's say we are actually like making an executor I'll actually show you guys what we need to add to our executor and we don't need to just like add the software URL we actually need to add a, a different piece of code to it our actual executor so to do that open up Visual Studio in your uh, executor for me I'm just gonna open up and make like a new project but yeah for you guys you guys can just open up your normal executor i'm just gonna click create a new project uh windows forms.net i'm gonna select this one i'm just gonna create like windows forms app one and i'll actually show you guys how to like push updates and uh, add updates to your things and for like our file transfer we're gonna be using discord you guys can obviously use like different sites and stuff to like transfer the files there but yeah and i'm just gonna go to here and upload the folders or the files so once this creates, I'll get back with you guys in a second. All right, uh, it's created now. All right, so here, this is gonna be our executor. Let's just pretend this is our executor. And let's say you guys have like multiple forms, like if we have a login form and stuff. Depending on whatever you guys put in program.cs, so let's say here I put like form, like I put this as login system. Depending on whatever you guys put it on, just remember that. And we're actually gonna go to wherever that is. So let's say if it was login system, we'd go to login system. For me, I put form1.cs, so we're gonna go to here. And you guys just need to double click a blank space. So I know some of you guys had issues with this in problem in like the past and stuff, just double click a blank space. So like here, this is all blank. So we're just gonna double click it. 
Now just to add a little element, I'm gonna add like probably, uh, give me a second. I'm gonna add like a text maybe, or like a button. My toolbox initializes. There, okay, here I'm just gonna put like a button like right there in the middle. And I'm just gonna change it to release because I always like to, you know, work on release. Um, and yeah, we're just gonna not care about program.cs right now. It's mainly in form.cs here, form1.cs, where we're gonna add our code. So, you guys, again, you guys need to go to Discord, uh, go to the Bootstrap or Download channel. And what we need to copy is check version, just pretty much all that code. Right? And then we're just gonna go to, actually, here, I need to put this down to the monitor. Uh, I need to check something, but here, we're gonna just go here and we're just gonna like place it in a blank space, like right here, where you can just uh, go ahead and paste it. So, you guys are gonna see a bunch of errors. I'll show you guys how to fix that real quick. Let me just remove these comments so they don't bring up a, a, a confusion. All right, so to fix that, obviously uh, we need to, we're using HTTP client, so we just hover over it, click this, and we're just gonna use using system.net.http. For JSON convert, we're obviously using Newton soft, so we're just gonna hover over it, this, and uh, install package newtonsoft.json, find install latest version. Then for file, we're just gonna hover over it. If it even lets me, once this pop up goes away. Yeah, we're gonna hover over it, click the little bulb, click using system.io. And actually, that should be all the uh, stuff we need to do. One thing I do need to change though here is, actually no, that's, that's fine. There's actually one thing I believe you do need to change, which is um your, uh, the URL. So here where it says JSON, we're just gonna put in our URL. Let's so go back to Firefox or wherever you guys were copy your URL, which is the, uh, the pastebin one. We're just gonna put that there. Now, once we did do that though, we do need to obviously add our uh, little check at the bottom and stuff. So we're gonna go to form one load, which means like on whenever the form loads. We're just gonna write some code for that real quick. So it's gonna, so we're using the check version uh, function. We obviously need to basically uh, do a check for it. So we're just gonna go here. We're gonna make a bool, which is just gonna represent either true or false. We're just gonna do bool version check equal await since we're waiting actually for the version check and then visual studio is going to auto automatically complete it but we'll just write check version bracket and then semicolon that's actually going to assign the check to a semi uh, to a boolean but we obviously need to read it so we're going to do my bad if bracket version and we need to do an exclamation mark to say if it's like not if it returns a false we're just going to do enter return like that. And uh, yeah, this should be it. So we're just gonna actually click build. And since we're gonna we need to go to where we, wherever we built it, so like pretend this was your executor, we'd go to like, let's say here, let's, let me go to where I built it, which is release. All right, so here, let me just uh, close this. Uh, what else do I need? Tom, where's the bootstrapper at? Right here. So basically what, what we need to test right now is here. Let's go to Windows Forms app one. We run it and it should say it's down. Actually, no, it's gonna say it's up for a second. Yeah, so as you can see, it went here and uh, this just opened up in my previous tab, but right here it's gonna show 1.0. It actually got the version. So right now it's running on version 1.0. It knows that it's all good. So what we can actually do now is uh, we need to put this into a zip file, our actual like code. So we're just gonna right click release, WinRAR, or add to archive and if you're using uh, just like windows you can just right click and compress to file we're gonna do it a zip and i'm just gonna name this uh executor.zip all right we built it it's 322 kilobytes and for now i'm just gonna use discord to transfer it but you guys can use really anything we're gonna go to discord mod here and we're just gonna take this and just paste it it's gonna paste here we're gonna right click copy link go back to firefox here and firefox is actually it's on my second monitor but here and we're gonna go to here, our area. And we're gonna change here, we're gonna click edit. We're gonna put in our software URL, which is gonna be all that. And we're gonna change the status to true. And we're gonna just say like added button. Here, added new big button. And here, if you guys like go back to our uh, bootstrapper, which is like right here, and we run it, should say it's gonna be down. Yeah, synapsis is currently down. If you click save changes, run it again, should say yeah. 
So here, let me just pause it real quick. Fetching version info, current synapses version, current synapses file version. It just says like all that stuff. And as you guys can see, it did actually download sin.zip, which is the thing. If we open it here, it's gonna have Windows Forms app. What we usually do is just take it here, put it here, open release, open Windows Forms app, one, and here's it gonna be. Now let's say we do have an update though. We wanna actually update it. So we'd go here, and let's just, I'm just gonna pretend this is an update. Obviously though, it's not. Um, we're gonna go to wherever we got our zip. So let's say we just re-added an update when we compile it and stuff, we add like a new update. Like here, let's say, I go to form one design here. Let's say here, so let's look actually, right now in the, um, in, where's it at? Where's the bootstrapper at, hold on. Right in the bootstrapper, Dude, where did my bootstrapper go? Give me a sec. Okay, here. Once we run it, it like shows button one, right? So let's say we're gonna change this to like a, a execute button. So we direct click properties, execute. Control S, build. And we actually wanna push that as like a real life, like update and stuff. To do that, we need to just re-upload it. So we're gonna go here and uh, yeah. I'll actually show you guys how to do that remotely. So it says build succeeded, so it already succeeded in the build and stuff. It's all good now. Um, so yeah, what we can do now is since we're here, we can just delete these two, right from our actually previously bootstrapper. We can go here to wherever we uh, built the forms app. So we built it in Windows Forms app one, and I built it right here in release. So if I run this, it's gonna say uh, execute. So since we're like building it now, we can just delete the files we don't need. I don't think we need the config file. Yeah, that's all we need, okay. So let's see, we're gonna go here, right click it. We're actually gonna delete the previous executor button. Right click, WinRAR, add to archive, zip, and we're just gonna name it, whatever, we can name it executor.zip. All right, and then here we're just gonna go back, delete the old version so no one can download it. And then we go to, where was it? Right here. Executor zip, the new one. And we just put it here. And then we copy the link, copy link. And this is gonna be version like 1.01. .01. So we're just gonna paste here. We're gonna get 1.1. We're gonna add it here. Changed, oops. Okay, so we're gonna name that changed execute, or change button text to execute. And we click save changes. All right, and then now that we've done that, if we go to, uh, where is it at? Right here, we can delete this. And if we go to our bootstrapper, right, which we can, we still have, right, and we don't care about. If we go to it, which is, I think I put it in Synstrap, right here, Synstrap, bin, release. And to just compile it, you guys right click, add here, add to archive, zip, and you send that to the, your clients. So here we have Synstrap, I just delete it right here. So let's see, we still have our bootstrapper right here, right? We run it, it's gonna say, oh, give me a sec, uh, uh, software version. Okay, I actually did make an error in this. Um, so, here, why, 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 why am I printing this? Uh, what I did add was a JSON error right here. There should be like a little comma there. I'll probably fix it, I think I mis-uploaded it, let me check. No, I didn't. Okay, I just made an error there. Whatever. Uh, save changes. I don't think it'll show up for you guys. All right. And then now if we just run it, should say, yeah, the new version detected. Change log for update below. And that's actually going to be the change log from before. And that's going to download it. And as you can see, it downloaded it here. We'll open it. Drag it to release. And if we open here, it should show the execute button. Yep. It shows the execute button. And uh, yeah, that's how you create your advanced bootstrapper. So what you do is just get out of here, delete release, delete sin, delete the version, go back here, right click, and this is gonna be our bootstrapper, which can add to archive, zip. I'm gonna name it bootstrapper.zip. And then here I take this, go to let's say announcements, and drag it in. Yeah, and then I just release it like that. So. That's how you guys make an advanced bootstrapper. Uh, if you guys do need help with it or anything, let me know on my Discord server. We have uh, support and stuff that can help you. Also, just me in general. So, I'll, uh, I'll see you guys in the next video, hopefully. Um, I won't take a break this time, just to uh, go off. So, I'll see you guys in the next video. And, uh, yeah.
I'll, uh, I guess I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll see you guys in the next video. G goodbye.